Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Marcus back for another video. I'm here to talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta season 10, episode 17. So we got one more episode before the finale. And then it's a, I think it's a three part reunion and then another episode after that one called Secrets Reveal. I don't know why Housewives feel like they got to drag their seasons out. They, they, I think Housewives is probably the only show where it's about a good 20 some odd episodes for that whole season. So the first we get up, um, the beginning of the episode, we're showing Portia and Ricky. You know, they were going, I don't really know what was the purpose of them going to the skating rink because Portia was asking like, you know, where's everybody else at? And so, you know, Ricky was like, I wanted to come early because I don't like, you know, to have a bunch of cameras in my face. But it looked more than me like Bravo probably rented out the skate rink for them to shoot that scene. And then they allowed the other people to come back in. Um, I thought that, I think that their interaction is cute. You know, Ricky Smiley did say that, you know, you know, Portia is beautiful and all the other stuff. But, you know, because they work together, he wouldn't consider dating her. But I thought that their interaction was really cute. Um, I could actually see them dating um and so they they was starting sat down and had a conversation where you know he was basically saying something about her having kids and you know she mentions the fact that you know she feels like at this particular point in time she's too busy to have kids um which i understand that because you know when i feel like as a mom you have to have time dedicated to, you know, your children and raising your children and being a mom, especially when your children are, you know, babies and toddlers and things of that nature. When when they're older, it's kind of different. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to wait too late to have children. Then you be sitting up here like Kenya having to take IVF and all this other stuff to try to get pregnant. Um, but whatever. So that was cute. So... We see where Cynthia was at the Bailey Agency. Uh, is that a shooting? Is that a shooting star? Anyway, I'm outside, so I'm gonna be kind of distracted. But anyway, so Kenya comes over to so they can kind of discuss because Kenya is putting together this event for domestic violence, where it's kind of like a viewing, a viewing of her PSA. She said originally she just wanted to do a quick one minute thing, but she was able to get it 30 minutes, and there i think there was like 10 women that i can't remember if she said they were going to be in the video but anyway it was 10 women that had came out and you know told their stories and so they're going to attend the event that she's having and they're going to get makeovers get their hair done and makeup and all that stuff oh excuse me and she had some of the girls to donate gowns and things some of their old gowns and the women are going to pick through the gowns and they're going to wear them to the event um so that was pretty much it for that scene. So I'm going to skip on ahead. So we see where Kenya is at a beauty, a hair salon, beauty salon, and the women come in, um, you know, get their hair done, get their nails done. They, you know, try on the gown. I thought that the gowns, each gown that the women tried on, I thought that they looked good in their gowns. Um, I thought that this was really nice because i mean you know we have you know because we know that october is domestic violence awareness month if, you know, october is domestic violence awareness month but it's also breast cancer awareness month and i kind of feel like breast cancer awareness takes oh takes some of the focus off of the domestic violence awareness a lot of times because i remember going back to october Instagram, Facebook, you seen all all kinds of stuff about breast cancer awareness, but the only time I saw somebody post anything about domestic violence awareness, it was either it was either somebody who was in, involved in it themselves or somebody who may have lost a loved one but behind domestic violence, but I feel like they're both equally important. Um so I thought that this was a really really nice thing that Kenya did, you know, making the women because a lot of times women that go through domestic violence, they 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 have they have low self-esteem, you know, because a lot of times, you know, the men they beat you up 
mentally and emotionally before they ever do anything physically so a lot of these women that go through domestic violence they already have low self-esteem and low self-worth so i thought that this was really nice of kenya kenya to tr do something to make these women feel beautiful and to love themselves again i also give a a, a fist pump of righteousness to women that are courageous enough to come out and tell their story because there are so many many women um who go who go who have gone through domestic violence or who are even going through domestic violence and for whatever reason it's they're ashamed to come out and say you know i've i've gone through this but the fact that you made it out and you still live and you still you know live in your life that's something to be proud of that's not something that you should be ashamed of um because when you think about going back to um La the season before last or was it last season when Sheree and Kenya had got into it and Kenya you know Sheree was basically trying to like make fun of the fact that Kenya was in a domestic violent relationship meanwhile she had gone through the same thing herself and it's like you know I mean I understand you know you you don't want to look weak you know because a lot of times women especially when you have those women that be like you know that when they speak about domestic violence they'll say oh i would never do that ain't no man gonna touch me and this and that and the other and then they mess around and get in a relationship with a man that's beating on them and so now they ashamed like girl you know but whatever i'm just i'm kind of going off in a tangent but anyway so what's the purpose of you riding with your top down but you got your windows up anyway so <laughs> so yeah i thought that was really nice so um Let me see. I'm trying to remember. So we see where Candy, Todd, and Don Juan were having a meeting. Um, you know, Candy was kind of feeling bad about the whole Nene thing because, you know, she did say that her and Nene were in a good place. And I think she kind of felt that her having to fire Nene maybe would set their friendship back. But, you know, because Candy did say that, you know, because Candy did say, you know, she, although she didn't agree with what Nene said, um, she, what did she say? Uh, you know, Candy didn't agree with what Nene said, but I think the reason, I don't think that it was that she was taking it lightly. I think that, you know, Candy and Nene, although they have and their relationship has been rocky, I think Candy knows Nene well enough to know that Candy, that Nene wouldn't intentionally wish that on somebody, you know. Like she said, somebody said something to her and she came back. You know, in situ I mean, because in, situ in a situation like that, you're not going to stop and think and say, ooh, I shouldn't say that. Or should I say this? Or I should say, you know, when you have, when you are in a verbal, ma a verbal match with somebody, you, your main objective is to say something to hurt them more than they hurt you so i mean if somebody tell you to go kill yourself like what else can you say to top that um now i do feel like there was probably something else that nene could have said versus i hope you get raped by your uber driver but i mean you know when you in an argument you not really concerned about you know whether or not what you say is politically correct or you know whatever you saying whatever you can say to hurt that person more than they hurt you um i think when when candy and nene had that conversation i think nene was trying to put on this front like i'm cool everything is fine and so candy didn't really think much of it until she saw nene on instagram crying and that's when she kind of felt bad um but i mean at the end of the day you didn't have no control over it it was you know it was, a, it was a, the other three escape members and the the promoter i mean and at the end of the day i mean them four against you i mean of course they're they was gonna trump what you what you wanted to do um and so we got to a scene where nene was having a conversation with her her youngest son um basically he does he's graduated from high school he doesn't want to go to college but he wants to step into the comedy world I do get Nene's standpoint. I do feel like comedy, stand-up comedy, is one of those professions where you really have to have tough skin, and you really have to 
You got to be funny because just because you a class clown or just because you might make your friends and family laugh, that don't mean that when you get on stage um, that the people are going to receive you the same way the, your friends and family receive you because your friends and family, they might laugh and like, oh, you so funny, you crazy, whatever. Then you get on stage and might try to tell that same joke and, every, and you get booed off the stage. Um, I do agree that college is not for everybody, but at the end of the day, you have to have something to fall back on because there's no guarantee that you're going to make it in stand-up comedy. There's no guarantee that your career is going to be is going to be a long career. So you have to have just like you know when you hit like these children, these kids that go to college on these athletic scholarships, they always encourage them you know, also to focus on your grades because you might mess around and break your leg or something and can't play sports no more. You got to have something to fall back on. And I hope that he's not riding on the fact that Nene Leakes is his mom, that that's going to give him like a jump start in the stand-up comedy world because that's that's not going. That's not it. Um, I should have put chapstick on because my lips are super-duper dry. So, um... We see where we're at Sheree's house. She's working on her basement. She gets a call from Tyrone, whatever. So, I'm confused because I thought that Sheree had already told her kids about Tyrone. Because when she was talking to the girl, and the girl was basically trying, you know, saying something to the effect of wanting to meet Tyrone. or And Sheree was like, girl, he's in prison. And the, and the daughter was like, like, you lost me at jail. But I was confused because I thought they had already knew about Tyrone, which I'm trying to figure out how they didn't know when it's all over social media but whatever um but the, but the daughter did say you know she was gonna be open-minded if you know this is somebody that Sheree wants in her life you know when the time comes now I'm trying to figure out the time frame between the conf because of course we know they record they go back and record the confessionals after they finish filming but earlier in the episode or when she trying to remember but something to the effect of Sheree basically was like girl I, she didn't know when Tyrone was coming home but now when the daughter asked oh he gonna be home in a couple of months which I think I did see something that he's supposed to be home around like the end of April um but you know whatever so you know they gonna keep an open mind also there was a scene where um Noelle was she's doing this internship at a at a dentist's office, I don't know exactly what it like. What it, it was a specialty dentist. It wasn't just like a regular dentist. It was a specialty dentist. Um, and you know, Cynthia did say that ever since Noelle was was a little girl, she's always had interest in you know things in the dentist's office. She would be you know playing around in the tools and you know asking the dentist different questions. And so, um, you know, she thought it would be a good idea for her to get do an internship for her to kind of get the feel of the the dent the dentist. I can't even talk the field of dentistry. Um, from what I understand, according to the guy, she's doing a really good job. Um, Cynthia was like, girl, I want you to get this job so you can help me pay some bills. Noelle was like, girl, they don't pay me. I'm just here just to be here. Um, which I think that is good that she is trying to find her own way in life. Because a lot of times when you have parents who are famous, whether it's music, modeling, acting, or whatever, a lot of times the kids, like, either they want to follow in the parents footsteps or they feel feel pressured to follow in those footsteps so it was a different type of thing to see that she wants to do something that's a little bit different um so eventually they sit down and have a conversation where she basically was asking you know what's up with will now well, never mind. That's I'm a, I'm gonna save that because that would have sounded stupid. So Cynthia was like, "Girl, everything is good with Will. You know, I still want to be with him." And Noel was like, "Well, you know, if he's gonna be around, I want to meet him or whatever." She was like, "Cool. You know, we can set that up or whatever." So the last thing is the PSA. So Portia and Shamia show up first. Then I think it was Sheree then well it might have been Cynthia and her mom first then Sheree then Nene then Candy and Todd now I was confused because all the other women was dressed up like they was you know like they were coming to an event but Nene that looked like it one, that was one of her nightgowns that she just threw on and came out to the event um but overall the event was cute Mark finally showed up at the, at the end of the season 
Um, now, a lot of people were saying that he looked uncomfortable, like, as far as being with Kenya. I don't think it was necessarily the issue with Kenya. I think that he looked, he was uncomfortable being on camera because, you know, that was, you know, part of the whole reason why we hadn't seen him this whole time because he didn't want to be, you know, a part of her life in that way as far as the reality TV world. So, I admit he looked uncomfortable, but it to me, I thought that it was more so of him being uncomfortable being in front of all the cameras so you know eventually all of the women came and you know kenya introduced him to everybody or what have you um now kenya claimed that he wasn't coming because he had to work um but when he walked in it just seemed kind of staged like it's kind of like she told them he wasn't coming I don't know maybe she wanted it to be a surprise that's why she said he, he wasn't coming because it seemed to me like she knew he was gonna be there the way she reacted but whatever um but i like to see this side of kenya because the whole time he was there she was just smiling and giggling and laughing i like that side of kenya um now i also saw something when i was watching wendy williams that she that she might be pregnant And I remember seeing a picture in one of my reviews a while back. So obviously that must have been Photoshop because the Kenya that I see, well, I might have to see what she looked like on the reunion. But the Kenya that we see on camera, and the, well, no, she ain't pregnant because she was on Wendy Williams earlier this year and she was slim and trim. Um, but whatever. Side note. I wonder was Sheree trying to insinuate something about the fact that Mark had a nose ring because she was like, girl, you know, I haven't seen a man with a nose ring since Tupac and whatever. I didn't even, I would, I would have never noticed he had a nose ring in had she not said anything and I still really couldn't see it. Um, but whatever, shout out to, um, Sheree got all this crap to say about Kenya, but at least Kenya's man is there. Where your man at Sheree? Your man's still behind bars. You know what? Going back to Nene saying that Tyrone is a con artist, I wouldn't be surprised if he just using Sheree, you know, got him a little, a little, a little, I can't even think of it. But I, I kind of feel like once he get out of jail, he going to drop her and move on to somebody else. But anyway, um, I think that was pretty much all that happened. Shout out to Kenya and the Bailey Agency for the whole, the PSA on domestic violence. I thought that it was, it was very well put together like i said i don't know if the women were included in the video or if they were just going to be a part of the event because they came out and told their stories because when they showed the clip all they showed was the castmates from the show um so yeah i thought that the, the whole event turned out really really good um so at the end of the episode nini and Portia had this conversation and Portia goes on to start talking about you got to be accountable for your actions and whatever, whatever, whatever. So Nene was like, okay, I guess Portia finally realized she got to be accountable for the, for her actions. And then Portia was like, yeah, you just got to say I effed up and I did wrong. Um, Nene was like, oh, she's talking about me. Nene was like, well, yeah, I've took accountability for my actions. You know, I've apologized and I, you know, accepted the fact that what I said was wrong. Um, Portia was like, girl, yeah, because I did the same thing. I'm just like, <sighs> I'm tired of harping on this Portia and Kenny thing. I do, like I said, yes, Portia has apologized, but I still don't feel like she really takes accountability for what she said. I feel like she said what she said to, I feel like. I don't think that she really believed that Candy and Todd was going to try to drug her. Even forget about the fact that her and Phaedra was good friends and she was a lawyer, whatever, whatever, whatever. I really honestly don't think that, I really honestly don't think that she believed in her heart that Candy would try to do that. But I kind of feel like she just, she said that to try to win the argument because pr prior to that, Candy had said, girl, you told me you wanted to eat me out till I came. And so she was like, girl... Like I'm gonna come like I like I said earlier with Nene, when somebody say something to you, you got to come back and say something, you know, come come back harder at them. And so I feel like that was really where Portia was coming from when she said brought that up. I don't think that because like I like we all said, she has been hanging out with Candy and Todd, has spent time with them. So I really don't feel like she believed in her heart that, you know, 
she really believed that that's what they were going to do. I think she just said it to try to win the argument. And that was Candy's whole thing. Like, if she would just admit that, I, you know, that was, you know, I just said it to try to win the argument or I just said it to try to hurt you or to try to get at you or get back at you for whatever, then, you know, they would be able to move on. Um, at this point, I don't know if Candy will ever take, will ever take accountability for her what she said because she still hasn't because even when she apologized to candy at that fate wedding for kenya she never all she said was i would like to take accountability for all the wrong i did but she's never said specifically what that wrong was um but but from portia's standpoint if you feel like i feel like let me say this i want to give a shout out to tay couture tv because they mentioned this on their uh reviews I don't even feel like Candy was really that upset. I think when she went back and said something to the girls and she went back and said something to the Candy Clothed clique, they're the ones that made it bigger than what it was. Because if you go back to when Portia told her, you know, I heard that she wanted to dra drug me and take me back to your house, you know, Candy was like, you a lot. But the whole time she was smiling like it was like she was, you know, uh-huh. Yeah, she was smiling the whole time like she thought it was funny. But now, it's like it's a bigger issue. I don't even think she was really that mad. I think that when, you know, she went back and said something to everybody else, they the kind of the ones that kind of put it in her ear, like, girl, you need to, you know, bring make make it up or, you know, make it bigger than what it is or something like that. So, you know, that's my whole thing about it. So, um, anyway, that's pretty much all I want to talk about. B, thank you all for watching. I will talk to y'all later.